Welcome back. China is facing a huge water shortage, especially in the north. And now the government is considering a massive project that may redistribute the water from the south to the north. Our reporter Han Bin has been looking into this water diversion project and joins us now live from Beijing. What do we know so far, Han? Hi, Phillips. Northern China is expecting massive amounts of fresh water from the south in about a month. It's all part of the $60 billion South to North Water Diversion Project, a controversial plan that has been debated for half a century and taken more than a decade to build. China says the newly created water network will help relocate China's water resources. Two weeks ago, I went to one village to see how serious that water shortage is and what the government is doing to deal with it. Conditions are the driest that farmer Kang Zhen Yun has seen in his lifetime. These withered corn stalks are about all that's left. It's a huge loss. My entire corn crop has died. We don't even have enough drinking water. How can we irrigate the fields? Kang Zhen Yun says the rivers are dry and the villagers have had little water to drink for months. This all comes at a time when it should be flood season in northern China. The country does have vast water resources, but they lie far to the south. The Danjiangkou Reservoir in central China's Hubei province is being used as a stopgap to supply the dry lands in the north. The government is pressing ahead with one of the world's biggest engineering feeds to take the water northwards. The dam has been raised to hold more water for the diversion. The water level can now be raised to 170 meters, ensuring an annual volume of 9.5 billion cubic meters of water to be sent. The chief engineer says diversion is to optimize the country's water resources. The Middle Root Canal crisscrosses four rivers, the Yangtze, the Yellow, the Huai, and Hai rivers on its way to Beijing. All they need is enough water. Testing has been postponed because of the water shortage in the south. The final preparations are going on at full swing behind me of this greatest of Chinese mega project. When it goes into operation, millions of cubic meters of water will be flowing from here to the capital, Beijing, some 1,400 kilometers away. The government hopes that it will alleviate water shortage in the north without creating new problems in the south. Despite the environmental and social impact, the government remains determined, saying the project could break the bottleneck of development and growth. We hope the water diversion project will bring about an economic benefit to the north by alleviating the shortage. We also hope those who sacrifice to make way for the project can find new ways to make a better living. Villagers in Kangzhuang now have free drinking water delivered twice a day, courtesy of the local government. Kang Zhen Yun is hoping the canal will help ensure a bountiful harvest next year. But with the water shortage in the south as well, what's available for the north will not be enough. There is a long way to go before the problem can be solved. No doubt, the water from the south will buy China time, yet it may never be enough to quench China's mighty thirst. Well, the amount of the water transfer to the north is based on the decades-old water flow calculations and the local water officials say it won't be enough. In addition to climate change and urban development have also contributed to the water shortage. It's likely that northern cities will need to find other solutions beyond the diversion project, Philip. It's quite the, uh, quite the project. I know you're also looking at the cost of this as well. Well, there will be some economic benefits. It's expected to boost the annual GDP by creating some 600,000 jobs each year and the budget just for the first phase of the eastern and central route, which opened in 2002, cost more than 250 billion yuan, or that's more than 40 billion U.S. dollars. 
final figures could be much higher. And nearly half a million people have been relocated to make way for the diversion project. And we have to think there is also the impact on the environment as well. So the real cause for quenching China's thirst could be very hard to calculate. But it seems to be the price the government appears determined to pay. Back to you. Han Bin, uh, thank you very much. Have a good morning there, live for us in, uh, in Beijing. Here's